um, kind of came to. Now, the main important thing, guys, I would first do is you want to make sure you simplify this as much as possible before we even start trying to do um, trying to get to the antiderivative. So, kind of like what we did with uh, you know derivatives before taking the derivative, like simplify it. Just try to rewrite this because we don't have anything for quotient rule for the antiderivative, right? So let's see what we can do here. So this four sine of x. That looks pretty fine. I know I can kind of take the antiderivative of that. That doesn't look too bad. Um, over here, though, this x, see how the, each one of these terms are separated by addition and subtraction? That means that x is divided into each one of those. So therefore, this is, um, can I just go ahead and do the work with you guys to follow? So this would be 2x cubed. This is technically x to the 1 half power. So I could rewrite that. And then again, remember, when you are dividing exponents, you're subtracting. So then this turns into a minus x to the negative 1 half. Follow, follow, follow. Somebody follow, follow. Yeah, OK, good. And then over here, we have plus 1. Now on this one, we've got to be careful because we have a negative in front. And we also have terms that are separated by addition or subtraction. So my advice to you would be parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. Subtract. I'm just going to use a bracket. This x is divided by this term, and x is divided by that term. Notice how 7x and cosecant squared of x are not, um, know how they are not separated by addition and subtraction. So the, really, the x is only going to this one. So it's 7 cosecant squared of x, and then plus uh, 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1. Then again, guys, if I don't want to use parentheses, I don't really like these brackets, I can just make sure I distribute them to both of them. And just make that negative. Please let me know if I missed if I missed you on some of my algebra. Yes. So x divides into x. Those divided out to give me just the seven, and then I did the one over the x. Now here comes the case. Why can't I divide out with that x? Why did the x not divide with that one? Which one? This x. This x and that x divided out. Why doesn't that x and that x divide out? It's inside of a function, right? It's like, it's like doing this. It's like saying square root of x you know, plus 1 over, uh, let's do it this way. Let's do like 4. Now, we guys, everybody knows the answer here is 3 over 4, right? Yes? But you can't just say, oh, the 4s divide out. No, they don't divide out. You can't do that, right? That 4 is inside of the square root function just like that x is inside of the cosecant function. okay? So just understand that, that you cannot divide those out. Here, you can divide these out because that's being multiplied. That's kind of like the same thing as you know, if I said 4 times 1, OK, that's a different story. Yeah, 4 times 1 over 4, those divide out. right? But in the same respect, 4 plus 1 over 4, those do not divide out in that case. right? That's 5 four. That answer is 5 fourths, not 1. Yes? Just going over some basic things that the most common things I see mistaken by students. All right, now that we have this in this format, can we find our derivative? Can we? Yes? So remember, what I did is I put this in parentheses. So what I did was I multiplied the negative times this expression and then multiply the negative times that expression. That's why I got a negative there. Okay. And again, even if you like, feel comfortable with that, I, like, I would recommend just still using parentheses because it just helps you avoid making those little mistakes, especially if you're like rushed and you're trying to do things like quickly. If you kind of get in the habit of using parentheses when you're subtracting expressions that are separated with addition and subtraction, uh, it could just help you guys out. All right, so if I want to find the antiderivative or general antiderivative, I can just go ahead and use g. Um, the antiderivative of sine is going to be negative cosine, right? Because cosine would be negative sine. So if I need to get positive sine, so therefore I would say this would be negative 4 sine of x. Yes? I'm working through this one a little bit quicker. Negative cosine, thank you. Not going to work too quickly, or otherwise I'll just get the whole thing wrong. But yes, it's going to be negative cosine, like I said, but didn't write. Um, plus, and then here we're just going to use the power rule for integration. So that's going to be uh, 2 force. I'm going to simplify everything at the end. Yep. 
over here. If we add 1 to this, we'll have a positive 1 half. If I divide by 1 over 1 half, we'll flip the reciprocal. We get 2. Yes? I mean, we did this like last class period so many times. I was going crazy. Um, that's positive, so therefore that'd be times 2. And that'd be x to the 1 half power. Um, reciprocate uh, 1, that's just going to be a coefficient of x. Yeah, minus. Um, now, again, I can take out the 7, right? Remember, the constant doesn't really affect. We can pull out the 7. And then we just need to figure out the, uh, the antiderivative for cosecant squared. Negative cotangent. Negative cotangent. Yeah, so I'm just going to write it, though, just as that negative cotangent of x. And then over here, we, if we add 1, um, x to the negative 1, remember that that's an issue, right? Yes? That's an issue. So let's not write it as x to the negative 1. Let's write it as 1 over x, because that should draw my memory a little bit more and saying, oh, 1 over x, that's going to be ln of, absolute, ln of the absolute value of x. And that's minus ln absolute value of x. And then we can add our c at the very end. Right? And now let's just clean things up here real quick. I just want to do, and you guys can do that all at the same point if you feel comfortable with this. But I just wanted to do it in case people had questions. We kind of knew where to draw. Yeah? And again, guys, the purpose of this is this is not going to be a multiple choice question. But um, at least you guys can see we did a whole bunch of things all in one problem, right? So it was just kind of nice to do it that way. Oops. Anybody have any questions on it?